Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lab of Advanced Embedded Logic Design, EC573. In the previous all the labs, what we have done, uh, in the first few labs, we have implemented the algorithms on the processors and then we observed that the processor performs the operation in the sequential fashion and hence the execution time is significantly high. Then if the algorithm is computationally complex, it involves significant amount of the parallel operation. Then we showed that by using the FPGA and HP port, we can get the significant improvement in the execution time. But the problem with the HP port is that you need a software currency that is using the cache flush and cache invalidate based software currency. You uh, need to take care of the uh, data coherence, data sharing between the FPG and processor needs to be coherent. Then we showed that by using the ACP, you can replace the software currency by one way hardware currency and that means you don't need to use the cache flush and cache invalidate function so advantage is that using the acp port we got the significant improvement in the performance then in the previous lab we saw that compared to the simple dma scattergather dma offers further improvement in the performance because you can configure the DMA only once and then you can DMA can perform the multiple sets of operation without the need of configuration again and again. Also at the hardware IP level, HLS level by using the pragmas and word length analysis, we can reduce the execution time significantly. So these are the various ways we uh, discuss via which we can implement the algorithm efficiently on the Zinc system on chip. Can we do better? Or can we do the same operation without the need of DMA? So for example, if you look at the way we have implemented the DMA, we configure the DMA and then we keep on reading the status of the DMA. So we keep on checking the status of the DMA, whether the DMA has completed the transaction or not. So this mode of operation is called as a polling mode. That means we are continuously polling the DMA to check whether the DMA has completed the task or not. Obviously, as we discussed in the previous lab, we can use the interrupt in the DMA so that once the DMA completes the task, DMA can inform the processor that, okay, I have completed the transaction, you can initiate the next transaction. So in that case, the processor doesn't need to pull the DMA and you can get this, some improvement in the performance. Till now, we were using the all the IPs with the stream interface. If we use the IP with the memory mapped interface, then you don't need the DMA. The IP can directly read the data from the memory, process the data, and write the process data back to the memory. So in this case, you can save the memory requirement or the resource requirement for the DMA, and you may get further improvement in the performance because in case of the DMA, you involve two transactions, one from memory to DMA, and second from DMA to IP. Now, with the help of the AXI memory map port, you can reduce the number of transactions uh, from two to one because IP can directly communicate with the memory. But now the question is how the IP will know at what address the data is present and at what address the process data should be stored. So for this, we need to use the additional AXI light port and we need to have the appropriate register in the IP so that we can write the appropriate addresses inside the register and then we can trigger the IP to start the operation. 
so this is the process we are going to discuss in the today's session so basically we are going to create a ip which is the memory mapped ip we are going to interface that ip with the memory and then we are going to configure the ip to read and write the data from the particular addresses so if you look at the block diagram it is very similar to the previous one except we have the additional ip which is equivalent of this ip in this two ip had the stream interface this ip you will see that it has the memory interface and this memory interface it is connected to the acp port then this ip has a light I interface for the configuration via gp port you can configure the ip now how to design this ip in the hls again the overall functionality of the matrix multiplication remain the same only the interface part change so now we want the interface to be the memory mapped so what we say the interface via interface you can see that there are the we are re receiving the input matrix here we will receive two input matrices so the total number of element will be 64 plus 64 that is 128 element so that's why we define the port of uh, 128 element of uh, total bus size is 128 and we are saying that the offset at from which the data should be written will come over this axi slave interface so you can see that the automatically register will be created and then the slave port will be created so that we can read and write from this register similarly for the output of the matrix we have one output matrix that is 18 to 864 element and again the address at which it should be written is coming from the slave axi port then the return port which includes ideal done ready start signal will also form the part of the axi like port so here you can see that uh, the interface is different from the previous ip where we had the stream interface now once we have this interface now we will be reading the data in the memory obviously this data will be in the sequential fashion and then we will need to perform the matrix multiplication in the using the 2d array so we will define the appropriate 1d array to receive an uh, data from the memory and to write the data from the memory so the first array is for the two matrices second array is for single matrices then we have the conventional 2d array for the matrix multiplication and we'll do the corresponding partitioning as required then by using this memory copy function in the hls we are reading the data from the memory so here we are giving the address at which the data should be written address at which the data should be taken from and the how much data you need to take right so this memory map copy function hls will convert into the corresponding axi read transaction and write the appropriate very log code now this very uh, data is then converted into the 2d data of input a and input b matrices okay then we perform the corresponding matrix multiplication as we did in the previous lab and write the data back to the memory so with this we have created the corresponding hardware ip now if you go to the your hls So if you see inside the HLS, you can see that we have the uh, corresponding CPP file, which is modification of the previous code. So you can see that in the CPP file, we had uh, the corresponding interface are properly defined. Okay, corresponding variables 1D and 2D are designed and then the corresponding mem copy functions are added then we have the dot uh, h file in the dot h file now we don't need a stream interface so you can see that it is only the the file and the corresponding pointers are passed to the function and in the test bench we have modified the test bench where we perform the matrix multiplication at the uh, software level then we create a uh, one uh, one d arrays for the matrix a followed by the matrix p then we perform the matrix multiplication on the hardware 
output one DRA is converted to two DRA, and then we perform the comparison with the re uh, reference output. Then once you create the hardware IP, you will see inside the hardware IP, inside the driver function, you will get the all the information about the IP, how to use the IP from the source, uh, up, uh, from the processing system. For example, this is the memory map of the IP. The first register has the start done, ideal, ready, and auto restart bits. Second register is for the interrupt. If you can enable and disable the interrupt, then you have the register where you can inform the IP, the address from which the matrix input should be read and the address from which the, uh, at which the matrix output, multiplication output should be written. So you can configure this from the processor. Now the corresponding uh, structures config and instance structures are also given in the .h file and the inbuilt functions are given. For example, you can initialize the IP, then you can start the IP, you can check the status of the IP, you can set the uh, input address for the in data, you can set the output address for the multiplication output, you can do this from your application code. Okay, so once you do this, uh, create the hardware IP, complete the export the IP, then you need to go to the Vivado. Inside the Vivado, you need to update the block diagram. So you can see that the block diagram will be the extension of the previous block diagram where we are adding the one more IP with the memory mapped interface. Okay, so you can see that this is the new IP which is added. Then this IP is connected directly to the ACP interface and then this light port is connected to the corresponding GPU port. So once this is done, you can regenerate the, your uh, output products and generate the bitstream, export the data, and then you can go to the SDK. So SDK code is the modification of the previous code. In the previous code, we were uh, checking the uh, we were checking the functionality of the simple DMA and the scatter gathered mode DMA. So basically, what we have done, we have just modified that code, and in that code, we have added this additional function. This additional function is designed using the simple DMA function. Okay, so look at this additional function. So you can see in this additional function, we first do the matrix multiplication in the software to get the benchmark output. Then we generate the 1D data for the both the matrices one after the another. Then uh, we can configure the IP using the same process we do it for DMA. This part can be uh, outside the for loop, no issue. Then what we do, we set the input address inside the IP using this set matrix input function. We set the output address inside the IP using this function. Then we start the IP and we wait for the IP to get uh, to finish the transaction. And then we stop the timer. So you can see that the process is very simple even for the memory mapped HLS IP. Now what we will do is that we will compare the execution time between the three operations between simple DMA, scatter gathered DMA, and your 
corresponding memory mapped IP. Okay, so now let's run the application code. Again, you can use the UART, but I have uh, uh, outputted the, uh, I have passed the UART output to the JTAG terminal. So I'll use the JTAG interface. Okay, so let's open the JTAG terminal. So here now I'll run the code. So now you can see that the, uh, on the processor, the matrix multiplication take 404 microsecond. For the simple DMA, it takes 58 microsecond. For the scatter gather, it takes 33. And for the memory mapped IP, it takes 48. So you can see that the, we get the slightly better performance than the simple DMA, but worse than the scatter gather because here we need to configure the IP for every experiment. Eight times we need to configure the IP. Obviously, we can modify the IP to give the multiple addresses that can be possible. But uh, uh, this is, uh, we have shown it for the uh, configuring I, IP only one time, uh, only every time for every each experiment. In case of the scatter gathered mode, you need to configure the IP only once. That's why it gets the best performance. But you can see compared to the simple DMA, this is much better. Plus you don't need the resource, resources for the DMA. You can directly use the IP to configure the, uh, to read or write from the memory. Okay, so this is the new approach where you can perform the acceleration of the operation on the PJ via the memory map based IP.